Hey people of the VC, it's Andy back for another 80s vinyl update, hot on the heels of the last one. As I mentioned before, I've got a number of items in my inbox that I'm keen to, to clear out, and uh, I tend to keep them in there till I've listened to them two or three times and uh, had a chance to, to put them uh, on a video. Then they can go back on the shelf, and if they're memorable, they'll come out again soon, and if not, they may, they may stay there and gather dust for a while. So I've... Um, uh, I've got a few to show here. I want to keep my videos to around 15 minutes or so because I don't want to drag them on too long for you. So um, I may have more here that I can show now, but you know what? Well, I can I can do another video, so I'm not too fussed. Um, I'm aware, I know some people can fly through their albums pretty quickly, but you know I like the sound of my own voice and uh, I like to talk about these records. I like to talk with you about these records as well. So anything I show. Leave me a comment and uh, let's talk some metal. But let's dive straight in. First up, I've shown this one twice already, so I'm going to be really quick. I showed this one, uh, Judas Priest Screaming for Vengeance, when I received it as VCLT from Corey. I also did a seal to, an, uh, to reveal because it was a sealed uh, 1982 original. And I just want to show it in this series of videos of just the 80s vinyl, uh, just for completeness, really, uh, so I can look back and see what I've shown. Um, so I have obviously heard it, and um, most people know this one. I know this is a lot of people's favourite Priest album, and I just wanted to confirm that it, it sounds fantastic, as good as the day as it as it left the uh, the, the presses. Um, so no problems with warpage or, or or any sound problems. Fantastic. Next up, uh, another one that uh, Corey sent me on VCLT was uh, Living Colour Vivid. Again, I just want to show it for the uh, sake of keeping it in this series. Um, one thing extra though is I, I went to a record store, a record show, uh, not store, not show, what's it called, record fair uh, recently in Edinburgh, and uh, I saw a, another copy of UK Pressing. It was at a cheap price, and I thought, well, I can, I'll, I'll, I'll pick that up and just see if there's any difference. Um, there's a little bit of difference actually. So um, this is the UK pressing. This is the US pressing. No difference on the front cover. Some slight printing differences on the back cover, not that you notice. Main difference being, I guess, that the UK, uh, the UK pressing comes with an inner. Well, with an insert, with the lyrics and uh, information about the band, and the US pressing that uh, I got from Corey comes with exactly the same information, but this is on the uh, insert. I believe the is, it, is the the label the same. I wasn't going to show the record for the same too. Oh, the 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 label slightly different as well. So that's a UK Epic label. And a uh, a US epic label. Now I always thought it was a bit surprising, really, that uh, Living Color being a a US band, so they were formed in New York City in around 1984. That uh, they would be Living Color with the uh, English spelling of color. The, Correct spelling of colour. Correct spelling of colour. Um, but um, I think Vernon Reed, the uh, well, the founder member, so he was actually born in England, so that's probably where that comes from. Um, Favourite track on here, um, probably the one that everyone knows, which is Cult of Personality. I you know listened to this a few a few times now, and um, yeah, still my favourite my favourite song. Um, I'm I'm not so I'm. I'm not really into collecting multiple copies of different vinyls, so at some point I'll probably look for a trade. Um, if anyone's interested in that, um, I'm going to keep the copy that Corey sent me though, because that was uh, as a as a VCLT gift. Uh, that means more to me than the uh, the UK one. So anyway, moving on to something that I've not shown so far. Um, this is one I picked up from a record store in recently. Uh, one that I wasn't particularly familiar with, and that's uh, Apocrypha, The Eyes of a Time. This is um, on Roadrunner Records from late 80s, 1988, 
on, um, I'd say Red Running, I just said that already. Uh, this is a Dutch pressing. So this is their second album from a uh, US metal band. It's it's pretty good uh, generic road runner label. It's good heavy metal, speed metal, bordering at times, I guess, on thrash, but not enough to be called thrash. Um, nothing exciting on the inside. Um, yeah, it's it's a good album. Um, some good some good tracks on there. Favorite track is probably uh, Alexander the King. So maybe uh, if you've not heard of this band, uh, check uh, them out. Uh, check that track out. Um, what do we have next? So next we have uh, an artist that I features quite a lot on my videos because I've picked up quite a few of his uh, albums recently. Uh, that's uh, Ingvi <laughs> uh, Malmsteen. This is Eclipse. So this is on Polygram. It's uh, 1990 uh, UK pressing. So it, despite not strictly being the 80s, I consider so the the very late 70s and the very early 90s all within this the same bucket for this series of videos because it's uh, the music I, I listened to back in the day and um, uh, you know it's all very closely uh, linked together. Um, So again, a standard sort of Polydor label from the time. And uh, this one comes with a printed inner, inner sleeve with his, uh, his band from the time with uh, the lyrics on. This is in uh, great condition. Um, vinyl needs, I think, a bit of a Bit of a clean, it's not a bit crackly in places, but um, it looks it looks fantastic. So I don't think it'll be. I think it'll probably clean up quite well. Um, I mean, love him or hate him. I mean, I'm firmly in the in the, uh, the camp of the former. I mean, this album is just. I mean, it's it's typical. It's pure Malmsteen. Um, the first release I think that he's done without under the, without being under the banner of the the Rising Force. Um, features a completely new lineup from the other albums, which is fairly typical of all his other albums. Really, I don't think he's had he's that, that much consistency in lineups. Um, the record itself, apart from the bits that are a bit crackly, are uh, you know it sounds really uh, it sounds amazing. But it's really rich uh, sound, very enjoyable to listen to. In terms of favourite track, um, I don't particularly have a favourite track on here. Uh, in fact, with most Malmsteen albums that I have. Uh, I think they make good listening end to end, and um, favourite songs just don't seem to jump out. In fact, I think I would struggle to name a handful of uh, Ingvi Malmsteen song names, track names. And I consider myself a fan of his. Um, it's simply because I, you know, just like listening to the albums uh, end to end, and um, I just find them really enjoyable. So there we have it, uh, Ingvi Malmsteen, Eclipse. I think I only, only got um, in terms of sort of the eighties. Up to 1990, uh, I've just got his debut album to to find now, um, so I'm on the lookout for that one. Yes, marching out. Uh, next up is um, a record I didn't. Uh, I had the opportunity to get uh, when I went out on my birthday dig that I've spoken about before recently, and um, decided not to get it because the cover was a, a little bashed. Um, but at um, Record Fair in Ocean Terminal in Edinburgh recently, they had a copy, uh, immaculate uh, condition. So I thought I would pick it up. And that's uh, the Twisted Sisters uh, come out and uh, play on Atlantic Records. Uh, so this is from 1985. This is a UK pressing. As you see, the uh, Condition is pretty much immaculate. I'm going to be careful with the uh, the fold out um, manhole cover because the um, the edges here are a bit delicate. But uh, yeah, pristine condition. 
um, as well as inside the. Uh, I mean, this is going to be one of the thickest card inlay I've I've ever seen. I mean, this is this is a better quality than some album covers I've seen in in, in European uh, releases, certainly from uh, the, the later eighties. Um, so what do I think of it? So first time I heard this through, I really did not enjoy it. Um, but a um, few weeks later, I went back and f forced myself basically to have a, have another listen, and I enjoyed it a bit more. There's some there's some you know good tracks on here, but there are also quite a few crappy pop metal songs that um, I just I just haven't got the time of day for. Um, songs like be cruel to your school and uh, leader leader of the pack. Oh, honestly, that just makes my ears bleed. I just think it's an awful uh, cover. I'm not. I, I'm not. I know it's a it's a it's a really popular song, the original, but I'm not a massive fan of it anyway. And I just think this just sounds awful on here. Um, the other thing that bugs me about this album is um, the track. The actual track listing, so on the on the pressing on the on the vinyl. Um, so this track listing on here doesn't match the order of the tracks on here, which in turn doesn't match the order of the tracks on here, and that. It really bugs me when bands do that. I don't. I don't understand why. They, why they don't just list the tracks in the order that they are. I mean, I like to listen to an album, especially a new one, and um, learn learn what the track names are just by you know sitting there reading the record, looking through, listening to it, and knowing what tracks coming next and associating the name. But I couldn't do it that way. So there are a couple of tracks on here that I like, but they don't instantly spring to mind because I've not kind of learnt the track order, and, and I can't. It, it, it's not as a, a good enough an album for me to actually spend the time working out the names of the, the songs that I like versus the ones that I don't. Um, it's an okay album, it's but it's probably going to be one for the shelf that only gets um, played uh, on future uh, random polls that I may do. Um, moving on, two more left. I think I'll get them all in on this video. Um, a well, this band here was billed as the uh, new wave of British heavy metal's answer to Van Halen, um, which probably doomed Hallenbach to to failure from the start. Really, uh, so this is a UK band from Tyneside in England. This is their second um, second album uh, on Neat Records from 1984. Um, I can see where the comparisons come from but I think they I think they deserve a bit of credit in their own right. Um, so let's have a look at it. So the inner sleeve of this is not original. I have no idea who Jeb Lloyd Nichols is, but um, maybe there's a maybe there's a an album out there somewhere by Jeb Lloyd Nichols with a, a Hallenbach the big H uh, inner in with it, but um, my guess is it was probably a um, a uh, plain white inner because we have kind of like a printed um, copy of a, a handwritten lyric sheet, which is kind of nice. Almost like you've got a personal touch with the uh, the album. There are some good tracks on here. Um, I mean, I, I like it. I mean, it, it got it, looking back at some of the reviews from back in the day. It, it, it kind of got panned, and it was pretty much the um, the nail in in Helen Back's um, coffin. But I, I I really quite like this. There's just one track, "Daddy Diggo's Cats," which is um, a bit of a, a kind of a Stray Cats type song. Which I guess if you like that, it, you, you're going to enjoy it. But it just seems completely out of place on this album. Um, I'm just showing you the label. Quite an iconic um, label there with the neat records thumbs up. 
But this is, I think this is a nice record to have in my collection. I'm going to play this uh, again. I'm not the biggest Van Halen fan. I quite like them. Um, I don't really go out and look for a lot of their stuff, but um, I I like this. I don't, I don't care that it sounds a little bit similar. Um, I think it's same but different. I'll leave it at that. Um, definitely going to look out for their, their debut album now. Hear this. I've never seen a copy of that in a while though, so um, may take a a bit of time to find that. Uh, what have I got? So got to do this a bit quicker than I thought actually. So the last one. Now this was um, this is a band I have never heard of before. Um, and since um, and even when I was actually trying to do a bit of research on them, I couldn't find very little information other than the band name and the album and maybe a list of uh, band members who don't seem to have done a great deal since um, I found this album myself just by browsing on Discogs and it's a bit of an impulse buy just because um, I like the cover it looked interesting so it is Erg <coughs> By Erg, Erg, please. <laughs> this is a. I love this cover. This basically don't judge a book by its cover, but um, I bought this because it's cover, and it's okay. I mean, this is a Japanese band. Um, this is from 1987. It's a Japanese pressing. It's um, the text is all in English. Um, They sound, they sound very much, so this is from 87, but they sound very much like Motley Crue, um, Motley Crue's first album, that sort of sound. Um, there's an inner with lyrics printed in both English and Japanese, I'm not sure how quickly that comes through. Uh, on the back, just an Erg Police um, logo. The um, the songs are actually sung in English as well, but the English is pretty poor. Um, it's very broken English. Uh, they're probably I don't know if they're trying to hit on um, more of a worldwide market or whether that was just the thing. I'm I'm really not into or know that much about. Uh, actually, not that I'm not into, but I don't know that much about. Uh, Japanese metal bands at the time so uh, be interesting if you if you've anyone has actually heard of uh, this um, this band and knows much about them it would be good I mean this is from 87 and it's in absolutely perfect condition it's from a UK seller so it's not been I've not imported it he may well have done um, the tracks so this is on uh, FBI Records, Far East Island Records. Uh, there are seven, eight, eight songs on there. All the songs seem to be about um, about the uh, eternal chase for for girls. Um, historic glamour. Before I change my mind, give me body, sexy body. Um, Hollywood City Connection, getting the fame. There's one pretty close to the bone, pretty dodgy uh, sounding song called Rape on Eyes, which um, wouldn't particularly go down well uh, in this day and age that uh, sails a bit close to the line. But it's it's kind of fun. I don't know if it's fun because it, it's not fun. Be, be, I don't think it's supposed to necessarily be a, uh, a jokey album. Uh, it's fun because of you know, what it is. Um, it's a Japanese band singing in English, um, and uh, it's it's quite enjoyable. I think I'll put it on occasionally and uh, and give it a spin. Um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, if you've heard of these, uh, let me know. But uh, yeah, give me body, sexy body. So there we go. That's. Uh, uh, that's that's helped clear my inbox down a bit. A uh, number of different bands, a number of different styles. Erg Police, Hallenbach, Twisted Sister, Evie Malstein, Apocrypha, uh, Living Colour, and uh, and Judas Priest. 
Uh, thank you for watching. I'll be back again soon. Bye now.